as we go now to number nine, the Seattle Seahawks on the clock. <sighs> Seattle's a hard one. So here we go. To me, this is Seattle. Seattle, to me, here's the team where I think there's a connection with Seattle and Oregon, the school, mm -hmm. right? Oh. I've heard here's two things here. Oh. Connection with Seattle and Oregon. I don't know what the connection is. Proximity. Ed Ogeron and Pete Carroll have a relationship. All right, so there's Derek Stingley. They could use a corner. They could use a pass rusher. And they could use a lot of things, as we've discussed. I mean, Seattle's got a lot of needs on their roster. They really do. So here's one where, again, I understand this is the first place I look at to go, this could be Kayvon Thibodeau, this could be Stingley. I wouldn't do it. There's no doubt about it. But if you're thinking about making a mock bet and betting on points bet or mock draft and doing a points bet, perfect 10 type of thing that we'll talk about here in a minute, <laughs> all right? then maybe you want to think about Thibodeau or St Stingley. I'm going Devontae Wy Wyatt from Georgia. That's where I'm going to go. The other defensive tackle. The other defensive tackle. The other guy. The guy that fits what they want to do up there in Seattle. The guy that's extremely disruptive, can be, you know, a Michael Bennett, the play-up type of force for their defense. Uh, you know, again, they, they, got, they have some guys that are solid or good edge rushers, all right? Some guys I think you could depend on. And then, you know, some of them, LJ Collier, you know, they got uh, – um, let, me, let me pull up their roster. Um, the kid, uh, Taylor, they, they drafted from Tennessee a few years ago to where I came to it and went, listen, I know they can use a pass rusher. I understand that. But felt like it was not desperate, desperate, all right? I understand the corner thing. I wouldn't take any of the corners there. I would not take Derek Stingley there for the reasons that everybody's heard me say. I understand that some people in football love him, and I get it. I see it. They love the feet. They love the hips. It's amazing. They love 2019. They love 2019. So and to me, Chris Sims just can't get behind. Wait, weird. Film was good three years ago. It got worse two years after that. I can't get behind. I just can't. So that's where it bothers me. But here, LJ Collier, Rasheem Green, Alton Robinson, Darrell Taylor, you know, again, not guys that you're going to look at and go, oh, man, they're unbelievable football players. But I'm going to go, no, they're damn good players. They're damn good. All right? Defensive tackle, they got some size guys. Puna Ford, Brian Moan, Quentin Jefferson's there. They got Kendichi, Yeah, Shelby Harris a little bit. Shelby Harris they got from the Denver trade. But to me, no, like, guy that can just – muck a play up and do a whole bunch of things on the defensive side of the ball. And that's where I go Devontae Wyatt. You know I love him. I mean, he might go higher than this, in my opinion. Maybe maybe I'm low here. Um, but this is one of the more interesting picks of the draft, and I'm going Seattle, Devontae Wyatt. Three Georgia D linemen in the top nine. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? I wonder why they were so good last year. I, it's it's really amazing. <laughs> it's the greatest defense in college football, that's it's for amazing. sure. Yeah. Right? And, and I think legitimately, I mean, you look at, hey, N'Kobe Dean – I think Quay Walker, of course, who I think is better than the Kobe Dean. Lewis Seen, Sign, Seen. the safety scene. Sorry, I always mess him up. You know, I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if all three of those went. You know, it's they'll, they'll be dicey. There's an end of the first round type of guys, but it wouldn't be shocking. So we go to 10 now. The Jets have another pick. You had him taking Sauce Gardner, the corner at four. What do you see him doing at 10? Gosh, well, the Jets, here we go. It's, uh, it's receiver. It's receiver. It's receiver. It's receiver. Who's it going to be? I don't know. Jamison Williamson's the best receiver in the draft. I don't think really anybody in football disagrees with that. Uh, not that I know of. I really haven't talked to one person that goes, Jamison Williams is the best. The period. receiver out of Alabama. Alabama. ACL injury. He, exactly. ACL injury, you know. Uh, late in the year in the national championship game. Um, I'm having them take him. I am. I'm going Jamison Williams here. Again, the play is not about what he can do for a year. What could he do for me in week three of this year? F week three of this year. What can he do for you in week 13 this year and next year in week three and mm -hmm. then the year after that? That's what we're looking at to like maximize the guy, right? So I just look at that and go, the guy's too talented, you know, He's a real, in my opinion, difference maker. I think he's every bit as good as Devontae Smith last year. In fact, I, I might think he's better, actually, as the time went on. I really think as the draft process went on and the more I saw him and stuff, I went, I think I like him more than Devontae Smith last year. I, I, to me, it just they're not desperate 
at receiver. It's not like, oh, my gosh, we got to have – like, it's not a Green Bay situation. Right. This is one where you just go, man, we just want one more guy, and we're going to be really dangerous with our biggest investment with our quarterback, and let's do it. And that's where I'm going to go that. Drake London, would he be in this conversation? I could certainly see him being there. He's very high in the NFL circles because of the size and the route running. You know, he scares me a little with the speed like we talked about. I think he could be a guy maybe in the running for this pick here too. But I, if I'm the Jets, I'm going Jamison Williams. You pair up Jamison Williams yeah. with your guy, Zach Wilson, right. and you are flipping your allegiance from the Giants over to the Jets. <laughs> you I'm liking them switched. a lot. I'm liking them a lot. I know that. I already do like the Jets. I can't help not like the Jets. I'm that weird Giants fan that actually likes the Jets too <laughs> because of, yes, the quarterback and the people that work there. You know, Again, so I'm sorry. I'm a human. You know, I've known some of them for a long time, and I believe in them, and they're good people. So I root for the Jets. All right, so that's the top 10 right there. Yeah. And if Chris is exactly right with his top 10, Jay Croucher from PointsBet will give you $100,000. Actually, I think Chris is probably ineligible, right? Pete? Darn it. We, yeah, Chris might be ineligible Why? for this. Why? It shouldn't be. It but should be eligible. If you out there are listening to this, and look at that look at that picture of Chris there with a, t- with a tie in the cheeks, <laughs> the high cheekbones, and the haircut, perfectly groomed. Professional. Professional. NBC picture to that this year. <laughs> Uh, but if you take Chris's picks and they are exactly right, you can win 100K from PointsBet. So if you've been listening to the pod over the last few weeks, you know that Chris has been giving you insight, analysis to help make you smarter when it comes to the draft. Our partners at PointsBet have been PointsBet have been listening as well, Chris, and they have cooked up a contest that you will not find at any other sports. Book. Any other, the PointsBet Perfect Ten presented Ooh. by yours truly. Chris Sims. Ooh. Yes, that jerk Chris Sims you. is presenting this to you. Why perfect 10, you ask? Yeah. Because that's exactly what you'll need to be okay. perfect, okay? And selecting picks 1 through 10 on Thursday night. And if you're perfect, you can win $100,000 and free bets from PointsBet. And, I mean, damn, if you're perfect, I'm going to call you next week and tell you you're perfect, too. I'm going to add that on top of the wow. prize. Yeah. okay. Right. I'm going to be like, yeah, we're going to have you on the pod, actually. If you're perfect and you win $100,000, we're going to have you on the pod and call you a genius and then also <laughs> like tell you, let's rub it in on points bet. And you stole 100000 from them. Yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. let's rub it in. What are we going to spend it on? What if I it's know. like 10 people? What I, if it's like it's something crazy? Then we're like going to have a busy pod next week, okay? <laughs> That's uh, what we're going to do. So here's what you got to do. You got to go to pointsbet.com or you download the app. If you're a new user, you enter the code HOMIE. You get those two risk-free bets up to $2,000. Once you're signed up, or if you're already a PointsBet user, you go over to that promos page, opt in to the PointsBet Perfect 10 contest. After opting in, you go over to the 2022 draft betting markets. And so you're going to see those individual bet markets for each picks, one through 10 there, Chris. Yeah, all right, cool. So that's good. I'm glad you're doing this and explaining this a little bit better because you're <laughs> yeah. way smoother. And than if you need to me. go back and listen to that again, which I might have to yeah, do. Yeah, we got rewind. Uh, we all got rewind. From there, place 10 bets with the stake, with the stake of your choosing. All right, it can be as low as 50 cents. All right. Yeah. All right, 50 cent. Don't be in the club. Yeah. You'll need to place exactly <laughs> one bet each for picks one through 10. All right, so everybody got that? You'll need to ex- place exactly one bet each for picks one through 10. Get your bets in prior to 9 a.m. Eastern on Thursday. So you got to get it in 9 yep. a.m. Eastern Thursday. Early or in the out. morning. Yeah, early, early in the morning. morning. Don't get wait your for those up. rumors. Don't wait right. for those rumors an hour get before. Get up, watch pro football talk at 7 a.m. <laughs> and as you're doing that, get in your perfect 10, send it in, and then sit back, relax, and wait to see mm-hmm. if you'll be $100,000 richer. Yeah. And friends with Chris Sims and Ahmed Farid. Exactly. You'll be on the pot. A recurring <laughs> that, might be, that might have ruined it right there. They might be like, damn, I wanted 100000 I'd rather not. Do I, I got to talk to these guys, though? They, they go, can I opt out of the friendship <laughs> uh, between Chris and Ahmed? All right, so that's points bet trying to give away uh, free money. We're moving on in our mock draft now. Number 11, the Washington Commanders. Commanders. That does not I, roll does, off the It tongue. does not. It really does not. I know. It's weird. And I think this one, to me, was one of the easiest picks of the draft, I think, when it just all laid out there to me. Kyle Hamilton, Notre Dame. You look at Washington, their roster, what they got there. They, they, got, they don't have enough numbers at the safety position. There's a real need, I think, within not only numbers, but the player himself. And you know, the thing you love about Hamilton is he, he can really fit kind of – Two, three holes in one. Yeah, it's safety. Oh, smaller linebacker, bigger safety who can play over the slot, almost like Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa in Cleveland last year where you can go, 
we can kind of be like leave him there and never really change and match up with everything. Oh, they got a small slot receiver. Kyle Hamilton's fine. Oh, they got a tight end there. Kyle Hamilton's fine. Oh, they're running the ball over there. Kyle Hamilton's fine. Like that's where he's great to me. And to me, there's a real need for this with the Washington football team. He's he's like another guy that I just look at and go as safe as it gets in the NFL draft. Again, I, there's no bust factor with this Even kid Even with at that all. slow 40 time. I know. 4-5-9, guy. And, again, like we've always talked about, I, I think, and you've seen enough highlights and clips now to go, yeah, it doesn't look like 4-5-9 when you watch it on TV. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't play like that on TV either. He runs a lot of people down, and he's awesome in coverage. So, uh, to me, it was one of the easier picks of this mock draft. I didn't have to stress too much about this there one. There could be some value there, too, because there were times where people thought maybe Kyle Hamilton could go as high as number two. I, to, I, to he is, I, yep, I think that's too high for me, certainly. But, yeah, yeah, is there some uh, – is he – is there a team there in the top 10 that really likes him sitting there? I don't know. I mean, he, he's worthy of that type of pick. And then it leads to the Minnesota Vikings at number 12, who took a couple of players that you really liked last year, Derisaw and Kellen Mond, yes, the quarterback. no doubt. So who do you have them taking in 2022? So this is where I think the slide ends for Kayvon Thibodeau. This is where I'm going to go Minnesota Vikings, Kayvon Thibodeau, off the edge, all right, you're coming. We're talking about a defense that's going three, four, outside linebacker type. Okay, now it's third down. We need you to put your hand on the ground and rush the passer. Just to me, makes too much sense here. So there's a real need. I think without a doubt, you know, again, Daniel Hunter. I know he's there as well. Um, Got to be a little concerned with some of the medical issues he's had to deal with the last few years. All right, with the two D tackles I have off the board already, you know, I don't think there's a value to go there. To me, they are one of those teams I looked at at those positions, and I just went, you know, D tackle, they got a little depth and some players there where I think you're going to have more of a desperate need to go the pass rusher, difference maker type that way. And to me, it's been an issue for their football team. I know corner's another issue that we certainly could talk about with the Minnesota Vikings, but. Yeah, they're mocked for Trent McDuffie in a lot of places. I, I, and that could be a possibility. I mean, that's, that's what I thought about, too, is going the corners right there. But I think ultimately when I looked at it, and again, there's Thibodeau on the board, all of that, I think they'd have a hard time passing that up. You're lower on Kayvon Thibodeau. This is lower than where most people have him. Right. Although this is higher than I thought he would be in your mock draft. Yeah, it was because I think if it was my draft, right, I'd go – yeah, I mean, really, my draft, I don't think he's someone you take anywhere before 20. I understand, though, that I know there's people in football that think he's better than that. You know, So, again, that's where I'm, I'm not going to be unrealistic here and just be stubborn Chris Sims. And, like, I try to do this with some common sense logic and things. I Yeah, I'm lower on most. I know, uh, I know there's people that do agree with me, but I know there's other people that look at it and go, no, I see enough there to think he's worthy of that pick. So the Vikings at 12 taking the edge player, Kayvon Thibodeau. At 13, we got Houston's second pick in the draft. You had him taking Iki Iquanu with the number third pick, an offensive tackle. What do you have them looking at in their 13th pick? Yeah, well, all right. Now we get into the, like, the range of like, okay, where, where are we going to go here if you're you know, the Houston Texans? And again, yeah, we, we got the old lineman. I got to look at defense here now as being the next thing that you, you got to address on this football team. You know, there's some guys on the board like Carl Aftis, who's a really good football player, who I thought about a little bit. Like, oh, man, would they like him? I don't know. I just looked at that and go, I don't really think that's like Lovey Smith's cup of tea. To me, the guy and the thing that I look at with their football team that I go is missing and it pops out to me is like a longer big time defensive middle linebacker in the middle of their defense. One, hey, I know Casario. They believe in size and middle linebacker in that presence. Oops, excuse me. And then Lovey Smith. Yeah, I mean, I, when he was the head coach of the Bears, I played against him. Guess who was running down the middle of the field? That Tampa 2 defense. Yeah, Brian Urlacher. And that's where I'm going to go with Devin Lloyd from Utah. Devin Lloyd from Utah, slam dunk, definitely the best linebacker in the draft. He's got very good you know, hips, length, athleticism. He's awesome against the run. Anybody listen to the linebacker pod? I mean, his ability to get people, throw people to the ground, get off blocks, weave through traffic, still make tackles. And then, again, being that long and athletic down the middle of the field, to me, is a real weapon. Uh, I, I think that's a real need for their football team. I think this is a really good football player. To me, it just matched up. But I don't have feel for this one. Mm. I don't. I don't sit here and go, 
oh, I'm hearing this. I mean, the Texans are one of those teams when I got down here to go, oh, I'm not really sure what the hell they'll do right here. Uh, they I'm might really try not. to trade back. They too. could trade back. I mean, there's been a lot of talk that hearing that the Texans could trade back or want to trade back. So, you know, yeah, maybe they get some team that's getting antsy about a wide receiver or something like that. Right. And they do that. Maybe they go the wide receiver. That was the other thing that kind of went to my brain, too. I just went away, like, is this a team that goes Drake London, maybe, and decides to do that? You know, again, I could see that being a possibility, but that size, that route running ability, all of that, nice little compliment to, to Brandon Cooks and Davis Mills, who's you know a good back sh- ball, throw it up type of player quarterback. Uh, so that certainly went through my brain, too. So no Drake London there, the wide receiver out of USC. Perhaps you give Lamar Jackson some help with a wide receiver at 14. Baltimore on the clock. I know. I mean, I don't think so. I'm not going to lie to you, though. The receiver thing like, came to my mind a little did bit. Did it really? It that, did. That was just a transition. Man, just that, it, I, I, I just I, made that up. I mean, they have – I ultimately, I went, wait, they got Andrews, you got Hollywood Brown, yeah. you got Bateman. Like, well, they got to they gotta do their thing. And I don't think they're going to be looking to the future going, well, we don't want to pay Hollywood after this year, and we're going to do all that. Like, I don't think so. I don't I, – I, so, but I, it did cross my brain, nonetheless. Okay. All right? Ultimately – you know, I got into like, I got into the D line conversation here with Baltimore. That, that that to me is where my brain kept going with this whole thing. And at the end of the day, I ended up going George Karlaftis, the edge rusher from Purdue, uh, just Baltimore guy. And then Mike McDonald, right? I'm saying his name right. The new defensive coordinator for the Ravens. He came from Michigan. He's gonna have a good look at this guy, the Big Ten. So those are kind of the dots I connected a little bit there with that one. Mm. Did I think about maybe going D tackle? To a degree, yes. Car- uh, Carlaptis can kind of do that a little Carlaptis bit. Carlaptis can do everything. <laughs> yeah. So where that's where it, again, if you're going to run a multiple defense, he's a stand-up outside linebacker, pass rusher. But yes, to your point, has the power to go like, hey, on third down, you can put him at defensive tackle, and he'll be a handful and hold it. You know, give them issues. So yeah, there is that. I did think about D tackle too. I did. You know, I, 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 you know, Clayus Campbell, it's it's up there. To me, the biggest, you know, Justin Matubike from a and is really like their most disruptive defense alignment. I could see them going that way. I just didn't know if it matched up for who's on the board and what happens there. Devontae Wyatt falls to that. Maybe they go the Devontae Wyatt mm-hmm. from Georgia. I thought about even Travis Jones from Connecticut, the big D tackle, space eater type of guy. I thought about that as well. But ultimately, I just looked at it and went, wait, you know, they got Tyus Bowser, he's a good player, you know, but they got a way. Man, you got a guy like Carlaptis on the ed- other outside there. You become a really pain in the butt, good defensive football team, and that's where I decided to go. You know, they got Jalen Ferguson, Tyus Bowser. They're not bad players here, too. So I'm just giving you I, – I, this was a tough one for me to sure. figure out a little bit about where to go exactly with Baltimore. Another edge rusher off yeah. the board in the Chris Sims Certainly worthy draft. of that to me, that's for sure. That's what I'll say. Five off the board in the first 14 picks if it goes perfectly as Chris Sims says, says it's going to go here. 15, the Eagles on the clock. Booyah. Eagles I got going receiver here. Again. I do. Again, reminiscent of my Detroit Lions back in the day of going Roy Williams and Mike Williams and yeah. Kelvin uh, uh, Roger or uh, not Kelvin. Johnson. Yeah. Well, Kelvin Johnson was up no. there and then Charles Rogers. Charles yeah. Rogers. Yeah. yeah. You guys went. Let's see. What, how did that go? Charles Rogers first. Yeah. Roy Williams second. Yeah. And then Mike Williams. And then Mike Williams uh, third. Yeah. Right. I've tried to block it all. Yeah. Out. <laughs> right. It, right. Roy, Roy ended up being the best one. He really. was good. Yeah. Right. Roy. I mean, he went to a Pro Bowl up there and did some things there. Um, But yes, with this pick. Here I look at I look at them as a team and go first off with the Eagles and go hey they got you know I, I thought about here oh wait, pass rusher could this be a thing for them all right well they got some players as pass rushers they just signed with Hassan Reddick you know I know like I saw a lot of mock drafts that got like them taking edge guys and I'm gonna go I just don't think it's that desperate of a need and with the guys I have up the board I don't think there's anybody worthy taking of there so that's where I don't look at it more than anything you know they just sign Sweat they still got. You know, Barnett. They still got Graham. Uh, they got Hassan Reddick. Uh, so that, to me, it just didn't make sense. All right? So that's where I'm going Drake London, wide receiver, USC. That's what I would do. At least I know Garrett Wilson's on the board. Olavi's on the board. Devontae Smith's those guys. They're just better versions, in my opinion. 
So, and he Devontae Smith was really good last year. Like, don't, don't get it mixed up. I know I said those things about Jamison Williams and all that. He's a really good player. Yeah. Like, I, I love Devontae Smith. But so you got Devontae Smith, who's the speed guy and, you know, can take the top off and a good route runner. To me, now we, we need another type of guy to go along with it. And that's where I like, I wouldn't go Garrett Wilson of them. It's like, he's just a lesser version of Devontae Smith to me. Let's, let's bring another angle to the defense here that they got to defend. Something else they got to worry about. And I, this is where I went. I was thinking, ooh, Burks, Trey Will and Burks, ooh, Drake London. I went London just from this aspect of big body. Jalen Hurts is a good big body receiver thrower. He throws a nice jump ball, soft back shoulders. We talked a lot during the season how he throws deep balls and he gives his guy a chance and he's very good at throwing the deep ball. And Drake London's just made for that to me. And that's what he is. You know, his speed scares me a little, like I talked about, but his ability to run routes and his size are real and they're elite. And that's where I'm just going to go with him over there. Where I, like I said, I, I, I toyed around with the idea of Traylon Burks because I think, too, he's different than Devontae Smith, too. Yeah. Wait, we got the route runner, the speed guy. Now we got the guy that we can give a speed sweep to and throw a screen to and sneak him out of the backfield behind the ball and throw him the ball and he'll make four people miss and outrun people and do all that. There's a little more physical of an element with London and Traylon Burks that makes sense. Uh, but I'm ultimately going with Drake London there. Your second wide receiver off the board after Jamison Williams, you had going number 10 to the Jets. It's Drake London, 15 to the Eagles. 16, midway point of the first round. That's the New Orleans Saints now in the clock. Yeah, and that's is where I'm going offensive line here. I'm going Bernard Raymond um, from Central Michigan here mm -hmm. as the tackle, right? I, I think a lot of people think like, you know, again, I, I think it's a, a, a real need for this football team. We know that. They're a team – like, here's the first thing I want to say about the Saints. I don't think Saints are going quarterback. And I know a lot of people think, oh, this is maybe where Kenny Pickett's going to go. I don't. I am one that believes the Saints think they're really good. The Saints think they're a player in the NFC right now with the way it's set up. And they should. Well, why wouldn't they, right? You think about it, you go, Saints? I mean, they lost Jameis Winston last year. They still almost made the playoffs. They had a bunch of injuries with their team. And they're probably looking at it and go, the NFC? There's only four teams in the NFC. We're clearly like maybe five. So let's go for it. I've got the sense from people around the league and people I know that, yes, they're not into like, let's start over with the young quarterback. They think they can still be a real player. And that's to me a guy, here we go. We need a guy that can play right away, help the football team. Uh, I like Bernard Raymond a lot. I know a lot of people think had the Penning kid I saw, yeah. you know, as the next tackle off the board. To me, this was the next best one. There was a more of a little more of a physical element to his game that I liked uh, more than Penning. I got Bernard Raymond off the board here. Our friends over at Points Bet say that the New Orleans Saints currently have the seventh best odds of winning the NFC. So a fringe playoff team. A fringe playoff team. The last team in. The last team in. Still right. win. That window is now. Sean Payton will be like midway through the year. He'll be like, I'm going to go back. <laughs> the team can still win. I didn't think they could still win. I'm going to go back. Well, you look at, you know, that's what happens. You look at the roster still and you still go, okay, corners are pretty good. Sure. Still got DeMario Davis, a linebacker. They were able to work, manipulate the cap. Yeah. Enough, D line like is really does. good still. O line. Yeah, they just got to replace a few people and maybe look to the future because they got some guys that, you know, will be out of there soon a little bit. So they got that. And, of course, we know wide receivers, another position that they certainly could address at some point here. So 9 through 16, we've reached the midway point of the first round. There you see another Georgia D lineman, Devontae Wyatt, going off the board there at 9. Got a couple more edge guys, very deep in edge, and our second wide receiver. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.